you want to destroy those tiles. The hate is swelling in you now. Take your sledgehammer. Use it. Those tiles deserve it. Give in to DIY. You've seen a post on Instagram with a nice bathroom. With each passing moment, you make yourself wanted more. It is unavoidable. It is your destiny. You, like all DIYers, are now the same. Now do it. Do it! <laughs>Back in the 50s, pink bathrooms were all the rage, thanks largely in part due to Mamie Eisenhower, the first lady at the time. With every new administration in the White House, it is tradition to redecorate according to the first family's tastes. And so, with Mamie's affinity towards pink, the entire White House became covered in pink. So much so, it began to be referred to as the Pink Palace. This is likely where the pink bathroom trend started in the United States, sometime in the mid-50s. The bathroom in this mid-century house was no exception. Though I wouldn't exactly call this Mamie Pink, or better yet, Pepto-Bismol at the Taco Bell bathroom anus pink. This is more of a subdued medium rare color. Regardless, I would have to assume that at the time this house was built, the developer listed various options for the buyers. And so, they loaded up on everything possible being painted, decorated, or made pink for the bathroom. Do you want ketchup with those fries? Yes. But I also want the fries to be made of ketchup. And the deep frying oil. And then the salt. You know what? Just give me a bottle of ketchup. Skip the fries. Does it have any merits worth preserving? Yes and no. It was in good condition and was installed very professionally. However, I don't think this particular aspect of the bathroom aged very well. That is the problem with trends. They come and go and often cannot be timeless. The bathroom as a whole with the floor, walls, cabinetry, and everything else being painted the same color is overwhelming. And because it is overwhelming, the lowest common denominator has to go to break up the monotony. We thank the floor for its 60 years of service and decommission it knowing it has served its purpose well, providing happiness to the previous owner. Now it's my turn to be cursed in the future as a 30-year-old boomer. Removing tile can be different shades of pain in the ass. Some prefer a hammer and chisel, some prefer to smash it with a hammer. But in this case, they are extremely well adhered and I don't want to destroy the backing board. I chose to go with an air hammer with a chisel tied to a compressor. Ordinarily, you're supposed to add air filters and lubricants or some compressor jazz, but I paid $12 for this hunk of Chinesium from Harbor Freight. If it survives the ordeal, that's more than enough for me. In a sense, removing tile is like going to the beach. You'll find tile dust in your clothes, shoes, eyes, and your ass crack for days. So unless you also want to find it in your lungs, wear a dust mask, and definitely wear eye protection. Also be mindful of the fact that this dust will go all over the house, so cover the door. You'll be producing bags and bags of broken tiles, so clean as you go. Now we get to actually tile. White tile was chosen because it's one of the only colors that goes well together with pink. And we chose this 45 degree pattern because it's incredibly classy and works really well to differentiate floor space from wall space. Now I say that, but holy shit did it skyrocket the difficulty of the project. The number of cuts, screw ups and broken dreams was simply astronomical. The cuts were done using a combination of this scoring and breaking tool, as well as my angle grinder with a diamond wheel attachment. The contour gauge quickly became our best friend for copying, well, contours onto tiles. Aside from the cutting, the process of tiling is fairly straightforward. Lay down mortar, position tile, and use spacers to stay consistent. Fuckups to an extent can later be covered up with grout. You may also have some trouble leveling floor beneath the mortar. Any imperfection will cause tiles to seesaw and snap under your weight. They certainly did that under my fat ass. Eventually, you reach the end with a fantastically convoluted cut to make. <laughs> no! Of course that would happen. After the mortar dries for a length of time according to the instructions, grout can be applied. This is my favorite part because all the fuck-ups will magically disappear. Oh yes, nobody has to see my incompetence. 
Apply the grout with a float and remove excess off the tiles with a wet sponge into a bucket. Once the grout dries, you will skim over the tiles again with a sponge to remove the haze. Rinse and repeat and pray to the grout fairy that no tiles decide to come loose during this process. A couple of hours later and it is done. I must say this is a stunning result. The white complements the pink tile we kept perfectly and it elevates the bathroom into downright fancy territory. Easily now my favorite room in the entire house. I think this was a great way to honor the legacy of the pink tiles by adding something that enhances them as a showcase. In many ways I think this makes the pink tiles far more accessible to any future owners of this house because the number of purists who desire a perfectly preserved example of a pink bathroom is dwindling like the number of hairs on my scalp as I age. All too often advocates of DIY tell you to demolish something and replace it with some junk from the hardware store without ever giving any thought to actual design. Because remember, if something is architecturally original, it was likely drawn up and designed by a professional architect who understands what looks good, functions well, and downright improves your health just by being in it. Anyone barking at you to just throw a bunch of $3 shit at the floor doesn't have your best interests in mind. Next video, we will be considering what to do about this pink sink cabinet. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Yeah.